Greek tits are superb problem solvers. And when they're pushed to the limits during the cold winter months, this ability to innovate is of vital importance. We first realized just how clever these birds are in the 1920s, when a group of tits in the southern town of Swaithling discovered they'd be rewarded with a fat-rich meal of cream if they peeled off the tops of milk bottles. But what was even more surprising was that this clever technique didn't remain localized. Instead, it spread like wildfire. So it wasn't long before tits were stealing the cream from doorsteps across the country. But how did this knowledge spread throughout the tit population? To answer that question, I've come here to Whiteham Woods in Oxfordshire, home of the most well-studied great tits in the world. Dr Lucy Aplin from the Edward Gray Institute is just one of the scientists monitoring them. So, Lucy, what was happening then in the case of those tits and the milk bottles? Well, we're not really sure, and that's what's fascinated people for so long about this milk bottle innovation, is that we saw this apparent cultural spread of new behaviour, but we're not really sure if it spread from a single individual all the way across the UK, or whether there was multiple sites of innovation, perhaps. And we tend to think of, of animals as being sort of like little robots somehow, and just always acting, reacting the same way to a stimulus. But that isn't the case, is it? No, in fact, great tits are one of the really good examples of behavioural flexibility in birds. They're extremely good at problem solving, as well as very opportunistic over their lifespan. Lucy's research is attempting to recreate the milk top story by training wild great tits to solve a puzzle box by either pushing on the blue side of a sliding door or the red side in order to get a reward. The training of the birds begins in the lab. So Lucy, how does the puzzle box itself, how does it actually work? Well, it's a very simple design. So I've got mealworms, which great tits love. And I have a sliding door in front of this feeder. And one half is blue and one half is red and it can be pushed either way. In some populations, I train the demonstrator to push it on the blue side. In other populations, they push it on the red side. So, if I get that right, if you then go back to that population and you see that the majority of that population from which these birds come are using the blue side, not blue and red, then you know that the learning has been passed on. That's exactly right. Look at that. He's trying to work it out. After three days, Lucy releases birds trained to push the blue side of the door back into the wild, along with the puzzle boxes from her lab. Here, she can track how their newfound knowledge spreads through the population. This right tip might come down. He's looking into it. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, I want to see it happen. They're all coming in now. Oh, here's a great tip. That's a great tip. Here we go. Was that it? As yeah. fast as that? Yeah. Oh, no, it just shut the door, just shut again. Yeah, you just solved. God, it doesn't hang about, does it? No. We've actually seen science in action. Yeah, it's so exciting. That was great. In order to identify and record unique visits, each bird has a microchip in a ring attached to its leg. Time to check out the results. At the front you see the antenna, and when the birds land on that, their microchip tag is red, so we know who the bird is. It says here that 129 birds have solved it pushing from the left, the blue side, and only 24 from the right. Well, that's conclusive, isn't it? And is that a typical sort of result, those sort of proportions? On the next site down the way, there was 206 solves on the blue side and none on the right side. None? None at all. That's what you like to hear as a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> pretty conclusive. <laughs> One question, how long does it take for the behaviour to spread throughout this population? Well, so in a local population like this size, which is about 100 birds, it takes about four weeks to spread. And we see this with a very slow uptake at the beginning when there's only a few knowledgeable birds. And then we have this incredible fast exponential increase of individuals learning until eventually it plateaus. So if I've got it right then, it does look like the other individuals are learning from the birds that have the behaviour in the first place. 
Yeah, basically by copying another individual that you associate with, you're getting fast track, reliable information without having to invest in you know, trial and error learning by yourself. And it might be vital to get them through the winter months. I was going to say, in, in a cold winter, for a small bird, that literally could be... The difference life between and life and death. It really could. <laughs> yeah.